Hello, my name's Keith. Welcome back to the shed. It's just a really quick video on the importance of bolt preloading. What is it all about? I was just about to take the wheel off the XJ600 and do a short video on stripping that down further and I realised there is a split pin and a castle nut on there. Um, and it just sort of made me think about some of the things that I've heard and putting the, the rear wheels back on to the bike in terms of the importance of the torque setting and what is it there for. Some people uh, give it a guess, crank it up, it'll be alright, just as long as it's tight. If you're riding it, that's absolutely fine. But what is the importance of that preload and why do we need it? So it's a really short video just to run through that before I start doing some more work on the XJ600F. So, let's have a beer and get on with it. So, on the rear of the XJ600, you can see that there's a lovely looking split pin. Nice and small so no one can see it. And there's a castle nut as well. Safety feature, uh, safety feature for obvious reasons. Um, that is in case the tensile force is exterior to the preload on that um, bolt um, are greater. If the, if the outside forces and the tensile uh, forces outside of that preload are greater, obviously you've got the chance the nut undoing and coming loose. On the fire blade, it's a little bit different. So that's the fire blade. And the fire blade, as you can see, has no split pin. And it's just got the nut on there. And that's why we rely on the torque settings, obviously being um, correct. And they do matter. And I'll explain why now. Okay, so first question is, is it a tension joint or is it a shear joint? Because they're different. But in this instance, we're talking about tension joints. And that's the two forces exterior to the joint, causing a preload upon the bolt. So in a tension joint, is it the bolt head or the nut that should be tightened? Do you hold the bolt head and tighten the nut? Or do you hold the nut and tighten the bolt head? And it's a question which matters depending on the type of joint and whatever it is that's being compressed and causing that clamping force. In torque related um, clamping, it does matter which is held and which is tightened. Um, but the general objective of the clamping is to achieve a consistent preload. And the consistent preload simply means that the preload is acting like a spring. So tensile bolt strength creates a compressive force because of the tensile um, strength within the bolt. And that compressive force is known as the clamping force. Um, it, the preload on the bolt basically prevents slippage um, and that's really what it's all about. Because you don't want the exterior forces to the preload being greater than the preload itself. In that instance, you've got um, a, a possibility of the clamping force coming undone. So you've got uh, the forces are you've got a shear, a shear force. So a shear force acting this way, and then a shear force FS, FS. Those are your two shear forces. And a shearing force are forces that oppose each other, like a pair of scissors. So a pair of scissors is like a shearing force. Okay? Um, 
you've got um, your clamping force from your bolt. We've got this and this. Do them a bit darker so you can see them. I haven't got different coloured pens, which would really help. So there are your clamping forces, okay? So that's the compressive force, okay? So that's being compressed. You've then got the opposite, which is the, the pulling force on the bolt. So on the bolt, as you're as it's being clamped, it's stretching the bolt, it's that's the preload. Okay? So we've now got We've got the um, tensile forces. There. So what's happening is we're compressing it, compressing the two faces together. Okay, so that's being compressed by the bolt. At the same time, the nut is pushing up there around that thread, which is stretching. Okay, and as it stretches, it wants to return. As it stretches, it wants to return. So as we talked about in one of the videos, to do with like um, elastic, if you like, um, metals having uh, an elastic, zone. So as you're putting a tensile force on that bolt and you let go, it returns. So what's happening is effectively is you're stretching the bolt and it wants to return. And because it wants to return, it's keeping that compressive force between the two surfaces. So it's stretching it and it wants to return. Okay? And that's what I was talking about with the exterior forces. So you've got your clamp surface and anything exterior, so any exterior vibrations, any exterior forces to this clamping force that could effectively um, stretch that bolt more than the preload, if it's going to start doing that, this bolt could possibly become undone. So the torque settings are there. Because their work, the, the torque settings is a, is, a, is a calculation that's worked out so that the exterior forces to those torque settings are no greater than those torque settings. Because if the exterior forces, tensile forces or other forces, are greater, it can overcome the preload. So that calculation, that torque setting that you apply, ensures that no exterior force can overcome. And if it does overcome, that's where, you know, obviously you can get into a world of trouble. Um, so basically the preload is acting like a spring. You're stretching that spring, you're stretching that bolt, and it wants to come back together. Okay? So that's how that part works. So they've worked out that actually 50% of that torque force that you apply using that torque wrench... 50% of that force that we apply, so this this uh, this force that we apply, 50% um, of the force we're applying is actually to overcome the friction between whichever one of these is being tightened, between the surface of the nut and the surface of the work or the um, material that's clamp that it's clamping to. So 50% of the torque that you're applying is overcoming that friction between these two surfaces. Because, of course, as you're applying it, you have that surface, um, two surfaces rubbing together. So you're fighting against that as well as you're trying to preload that bolt. You're rubbing those two first surfaces together. 
and actually only 10 to 15 percent of the torque being applied is used to tighten the nut. The rest is lost in the friction between the bolt head and the material and also the preload and the, uh, the tensile strength amongst the threads. And uh, it's all sort of eaten up within here, you know, this, this preload being applied, working against the friction of the threads, of course, and working against the preload because it wants to return. And then you've got the friction underneath which one of these is being tightened. If you're tightening this one, obviously you've got the friction between those two surfaces as well. There are other things like why we use washers and things because washers can um, help, well, two reasons a washer can be used. One is to protect the surface that it's being clamped onto to uh, protect that, that nut or, or whatever it's being tightened driving into that surface and spreads that, that sort of, uh, it, uh, spreads the, the force over a greater surface area. And also the other is to do with friction where the uh, where washers are sometimes required because the friction between the two surfaces need need that additional wash or it makes it easier to clamp. But there's a whole lot of science in that and I haven't got time to get into that now. I just wanted to briefly explain um, why we need to use a torque wrench and what preload is and what it's all about. So when you're putting the rear wheel on your bike, don't guesstimate, get a torque wrench, borrow a torque wrench, put it to the right setting. Because if you under tighten it, and the friction and uh, you know if you under tighten it you could be in a world of trouble it's that simple isn't it you know um, if you over tighten it then you've got the risk of stripping the threads on the axle but uh, there are spaces there and you would kind of you know before anything happens to the bear and you've got to get past the spaces so but you have got the risk of stripping threads and you know you strip threads and then again it becomes expensive so really get yourself a torque wrench um, and when you store your torque wrench away remember to release the tension um, some people put torque wrenches away and they've left them tensioned up and it doesn't do them any good so really short video hope that was interesting in some way and I hope you got something from it if not it's a little bit of science for you. Right, I can have a beer and then I can get on with stripping the XJ600. Thanks for listening, really appreciate it.